Mind your own business radio. <laughs> Welcome back to Mind Your Own Business. This is our top five tips segment, and yes, we are having fun on the break today. And this is our top five tips segment, and with us today is Rich Brooks, and he's going to share his top five tips on blogging. Rich is president and chief blogging officer of Flight New Media. He helps small businesses succeed online with search engine optimization, business blogging, email marketing, social media consulting, and building websites that sell. Rich Brooks, welcome to Mind Your Own Business. Thank you very much for having me. And where can I get a ditty like yours? Yes. So every time they call me, I have a song like that. <laughs> Wasn't that? That was uh, the Hot Dog King's gift to me. Thank you. <laughs> I go Excellent. away for a week and look what I'm <laughs> We go crazy, Allison. <laughs> so... Uh, back to blogging. I know blogging's supposed to be helpful in generating buzz about your business. I don't know much about it, and I'm not sure how much business it really brings in. So why is this helpful? I see blogs out there, but is it really doing anything for the business? Uh, I think blogging is probably the most powerful tool in your online toolbox when it comes to marketing your business. Why? Uh, because right now, in, in terms of trying to increase your online visibility, there's two things you need to take into consideration. Search and social. Search engine optimization and social media. That's how you increase your visibility. And a blog can help you in both categories. Okay, well, let's start with these tips. Give us tip number one. All right, so first of all, I think everybody needs to own their own domain name. What does that mean? That means that uh, there's a lot of different blogging platforms out there. WordPress is my personal favorite, but there's TypePad, Blogger, Blogspot, Drupal, Joomla, a whole bunch of other ones as well. And what's important is that you own your own domain name. So instead of getting like mycompany.typepad.com or mycompany.wordpress.com, you want to own a blog with like mycompany.com slash blog or mycompanyblog.com. So that way, in case you ever have to move to another platform, you don't oh, give up all okay. those inbound links that you've generated or developed all over the years. Plus, when you're on somebody else's platform with their domain name, you're building up trust for them from a search engine standpoint, not for yourself. So you mm. want you don't want to be working for the man. You want to be working for yourself. <laughs> I just think it looks more professional when it's mycompany.com instead of, you know, mycompany slash whatever dot com. Well, as long as you own the domain name, and personally, I think it looks professional. Whether it's like, for example, we had flight.biz as our website, flightblog.com is our blog. So we have it at two different domains, but we have branded and owned both of those. And when we changed from WordPress or from TypePad to WordPress a few years ago, we didn't lose all of those inbound links because we did own our okay. domain name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, tip number two. All right, so you want to blog so that the search engines can find you. What does that mean? I mean, I, I told you, I know nothing about right. blogging. I don't understand what that means. Every blog post you create creates another web page. Every web page is another opportunity to rank well for a very specific search term. So if you want to succeed, if you want to be found for your best search terms, literally just comes down to blogging about them. So, you know, if you are uh, if you're a plastic surgeon and you want to generate business, then you need to start blogging around terms like plastic surgery, cosmetic surgeon, rhinoplasty, nose job, tummy tuck, whatever you think. And you should actually do what's called a keyword analysis where you actually find out how many people are doing searches on specific keywords. So you find out, should you be blogging about rhinoplasty or should you be blogging about uh, nose, nose jobs? jobs? Nose so job. if more people are looking for nose jobs, we want to be blogging about nose jobs. Yes, although there are some more variables in there because there may be a lot more competition for popular words. So you have to kind of do your measurements using some online tools and then that will help you determine what your keywords are then you take your keywords and you start putting them in the title of the blog post in the first couple sentences of the blog post mm -hmm. and using it throughout that post as well now see I don't do that when I blog I don't take into consideration the topic I'm blogging about and putting it in the first couple of sentences yeah and I've got to work harder on that Absolutely. So yeah. if I'm doing a blog post on, say, QR codes or putting on a webinar, I want to use that in the title, and then I want to start the first sentence off using those words, and sometimes bold and italicizing, and that can add a little extra push as well from a search engine standpoint. So the Google's going to be okay with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I called them up earlier. They said it's fine. <laughs> good, good, good. 
<laughs> Tip number three. All right. So uh, the next thing is you want to, you know, the blog is more about having a conversation, establishing expertise, credibility, all these sort of things. Your website tends to be more about making that sale. So what I like to recommend is that you blog around your topics, but then you take those keyword rich links and point them over to your website where you're maybe being a little more salesy. So for example, wait, if, I don't. What do you mean by keyword rich links? All right. So for example, a lot of people make the mistake of creating a link from their blog to their website uh -huh. with something like click here to learn more. But search engines look at the words in that link and that weighs into the algorithm of how you rank. So let's say that I'm a dog trainer and I want to promote my dog training skills. Well, I might have a blog post about 10 things you never want to do while training your dog. And anytime I use words like dog training, I'm going to link that keyword rich term because those are the keywords I'm targeting and link that over to the page on my website where I talk about my dog training uh, services and products. So if I'm that plastic surgeon, every time I say nose job, I should create a link that goes back to my website where there's the before and after picture. Exactly. On oh, those I'm this. You are good. Absolutely. Quick I'm study, good. Allison. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Tip number four. Uh, you want to engage your audience on and off your blog. How, how do you, it's a blog. How do you engage them off the blog? Well, on the blog, you can people can comment. So if anybody okay. takes the time to comment on your blog, you absolutely should be responding to those comments. Um, that's the first tip. The second part of it is you should also, if you're serious about increasing your visibility and driving more traffic to your website and building your business, then you need to be doing things in social media these days, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever it is. So as you develop your network on these different tools, like say LinkedIn, if you're engaging with other people, answering questions, asking questions of them, complimenting on them on things that they're doing right now, then they'll see you more often and then they're more likely to click on that link and and uh, follow you back to your blog. So that's what I mean about engaging people off of your blog as well. So as an example, hot topic last week was tattoos in the workplace. A lot of people <laughs> left comments. Hey, it was <laughs> really? a hot topic. It turned out to be a hot topic. And a lot of people left comments about that on LinkedIn. Right. I then responded to each of those comments saying, what do you think about the other tips from last week and sent them to a website. Is sure. that, was that the right thing to do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's your engagement engaging with your audience. Um, and I find that the easiest way to engage people is ask them a question about what they're interested in because people always want to talk about themselves. This is true. This is true. Okay. Um, what if you're using Twitter only? What what, what what should I do? Well, if I'm on Twitter, and I love Twitter, um, and you can engage me there, The Rich Brooks. The uh, Rich Brooks. The Rich Brooks, all one word. So, you know, I talk to people day and night on Twitter. Sometimes it's about business. Sometimes it's about, you know, lifestyle stuff, whatever's going on, making jokes. And uh, I just talk back and forth. So I'm engaging with them through Twitter, just like I would at a networking event. Now, see, I don't use Twitter in that manner. I don't um, either. I use it more like, uh, I guess, a mini press release. Yeah. Uh, and there's type. nothing wrong with that, but you're going to get better results if you're talking with people and not just at them. Okay. So instead of announcing, hey, hear about tattoos, we should on Twitter say, what do you think about tattoos? Or I would say, hey, why doesn't everybody go to our Facebook page and post your tattoo and let us know whether it shows up when you're wearing your clothes Ooh. or not? Oh, I like that question. Can I steal that? <laughs> Absolutely. All go right. Ahead. Just give me some credit, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm the Rich Brooks on Facebook, too. Um, okay, give us tip number five. All right, be patient and persistent. And by this, I just mean that blogging is is not like pay-per-click ads on Google. You will not get page one results on day one. You should really expect to blog two to three times a week for six months before you really get the results you're looking for. A post of a minimum, I'd say, 300 words per post. I, I don't want to say that there's a magic number here, but you know, just in terms of best practices. Now, that always seems overwhelming to people. I was going to say, that's a lot of work. You have so much stuff that you guys know, and every business owner knows that he or she has forgotten that that's actually critical knowledge to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I do Dear Abby style blog posts all the time. Somebody emails me. Rather than re hit reply, oh. I, I change that email and I do a Dear Abby style post, again, using my keywords. So Because I figure if she's asking me this question, how many thousands of people are asking Google the same question? So I want Google to give them my answer, which leads them back to my blog, which then directs them to my website. Oh, yeah. And I've had posts that are as old as 
post from 2006 that's still pulling hundreds of new visitors every month to my blog. Now that is well worth the time and investment in blogging, in my opinion. And that's actually probably the number one tool that's grown our business. And we get business from all over the country. And I was just interviewed by CNN for something I wrote about QR codes. That all comes from blogging and being consistent and taking this seriously as a marketing tool to grow your business. Okay. I love these tips, but I have to ask you. You've mentioned QR codes now a couple what of times. Is what is a QR code? Oh, I think you're going to have to have me back for my top five <laughs> tips on QR codes now. Uh, very shortly, it is a um, black and white flat uh barcode that people can scan with a smartphone that then directs them to a website or to a um, or to a Google map or whatever you need to send them to to get more information. So it's a great way of taking people who are in the real world, mm -hmm. IRL in real life, and redirect them to a digital space, whether it's a website or a video or whatever. And uh, if you Google QR code marketing, then you will find that the top three results, at least of yesterday, were all from me, from three different blogs that I write for. So again, the power of blogging, and that's how CNN found me to do the interview. Oh, wow. So as you're blogging about all these, with your best keywords, you will also find that people will find you who are in, uh, who are in the media. And then they call you up, mm -hmm. and suddenly, you're the expert. Uh -huh. Yes, And yes. then you get on radio shows like this one. There you go. There you go. <laughs> really? I love it. Full I love circle. It. We are definitely going to have you back and talk about QR codes. Okay, so the top five tips were only own your own domain name, blog so that the search engines can find you, create keyword rich links back to your main site, engage your audience on and off your blog, and be patient and persistent. You got it. Rich, these are great tips. Tell us how we can learn more about you. Well, you can definitely visit our website at www.flight.biz and check out our blog at flightblog.com. Lots of great information about marketing your small business or nonprofit. And then uh, if you are on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, you can always find me. My handle is the Rich Brooks, all one word, not a megalomaniac. There was just another Rich Brooks who beat me to the punch. <laughs> And you've got a freebie for the listeners today, yes? Yes. If you go to our blog, you can download the 11 biggest mistakes small business bloggers make. Great article. Gives you a whole bunch of things to avoid. All mistakes I made. Learn from my mistakes, not your own. And uh, so you just go down there. You will have to sign up for our free email newsletter, but you can unsubscribe the second you get your 11 top but tips. But we would but not why dream would you? of doing that. Don't you want to grow your business? Don't you want to be successful? Of course. Hire more people in Maine and bring the Maine economy up to where it should be? There Absolutely. you go. That's there our you go. goal. Fantastic. Uh, flightblog.com, and you can get the freebie, 11 Biggest Mistakes Small Business Bloggers Make. Well, Rich Brooks, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much.